10 seconds to go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game two of... Uh of Southern Cross Dota Tides Wrath Season 3. We do have Yellow Reserve Solo mid time. on the Radiant, and we're going to have Rest on the Dire in the moment. This is Game 2 of a best of 3 series in the lower bracket. Um, I'm going to call out who won in about 10 seconds' time. So if you are currently watching the stream or in-game, just mute your mute sound for about 20 seconds while I say who won, but you will see this in about 2-3 minutes' time. So Yellow Solo mid did take Game 1 quite, quite decisively. But Rest did put up a good fight. But we are, this is a fresh game, fresh draft, fresh picks, fresh side of the map. So we will be seeing YSM banning out the Elder Titan first. Lich is going to be banned out by Rest. And we're going to see Weaver being banned out by Yellow Solo Mid. He is the second ban at the moment. But Rest looking to ban out one more hero. And Lich, who's gone from never picked to never banned, is now banned or picked up every game because of that sacrifice. The free experience seconds to go. that you get, and not only deny from the other team, Five is seconds. it's first pick, first ban worthy, really. Um, Reserve time. It's just such a useful skill. It's the only skill which really generates you free experience. Aside from like a minus, but Dyer's even so, and Clockwork going to be banned out by Rest. A bit of a Radiant's respect ban pick. there for towards HCA. He was firing off those hook shots so well last game, and this leaves YSM able to pick up a Bat Rider who really hasn't been seen too much since the nerf in the last patch. His base damage was reduced by ten uh, in, in all instances. So he's a very strong hero now. And that's going to make him Radiant quite strong. Darkseer will be the first assassin. pick up by Rast, followed by a Nyx Assassin. So putting it, not going to be able to take the Nyx Assassin, but this leaves Luna. Luna, the Moon Rider. Moon Rider? I don't remember what she was called in Dota 1, I never played Dota 1. But Luna is going to be picked up, and she received a big buff in the last patch, 6.79, which means her Glaives can bounce Radiant to the same band. unit twice. Which gets a little bit silly. Yellow Solar Mid are going to ban out that Outward Devourer, and Rest are going to ban out that Life Stealer once band. again. And some random person, Christina, has just added me to my friends list, ladies and gentlemen. I want you in the Twitch chat to tell me if I should add her or not. But Yellow Solar Mid back into the banning seat at the moment. Ten They've already got two very strong picks picked up at the moment. They've got the safe lane Luna, and either the mid or the off lane Bat Rider. Um, they can also band. jungle as well. But that's going to be great because that lasso with a blink and a four staff just allows him to to grab an enemy and just drag them into their fights. So they can pick really anyone off. Uh, Timazor will also be banned out. But even rest at the moment, they've got that impale on the Nyx Assassin and that ganking Ten potential from level six. To go. But Dark Seer, the the Iron Shell, he makes such a strong Five offliner seconds. as well uh, because of the the Iron Shell. He can just time. throw. Uh, throw that Iron Shell on creeps from a safe distance and just manage to stay alive uh, by just keeping himself at that safe distance while still managing to last hit, uh, get gold, get farm, and harass the the enemy heroes from, from a secure position. Plus he's got that surge to, to keep himself away, but to top it all off, Vacuum is one of the only skills in the game which can move multiple heroes from one area to another at the same time, which is why it's on such a long cooldown, because of that displacement ability, and you combine that with the Wall of Illusion, um, Wall of Illusion, Wall of Replica, you combine it with the Impale on Nyx, and really any AoE stuns, like, or combos, like your Enigma at Black Hole, or your Song of the Siren, you've got such a mean combo. Rubik is going to be banned out by Rest, so Tondas will not be playing that Rubik again, and now Visage, the flying gargoyle guy, Going to be picked up. He did get a slight nerf in the last patch as well. His base magic resist going from 25% to 10%, meaning you are forced to pick up an early level of Gravekeeper's Cloak. You still want to be maxing that soul assumption, but you, you need to be going at least one level in that Gravekeeper's Cloak. Up to four, really. And Radiance just pick. sort of neglecting that Grave Chill ability. But you do see Rubik often, uh, sorry, Visage often in an aggressive tri lane, or at least as a roaming ganker at the moment. We will also. We also be seeing a lion picked up from Yellow Solar Medic once again. Talik played that role beautifully last game, uh, doing wonders with that finger of death. 
So he had a great Ten time doing that, and he's a great great support hero as well, Five receiving, receiving slight buffs in the last patch. He's always been quite strong. Um, even in Han as Witch Doctor, he was he was Reserve first pick time. and is still picked up and relevant to the Invoker. to the meta game. There's going to be an Invoker Dyer's pick up, I rest, who I haven't seen in a little bit, um, but he's going to be picked up now. And Invoker got a huge buff in the last patch, allowing him to have two spells at level one. As some of you may know or may not know, Invoker used to only give you a single ability at its first level, at level two, but now you can get the two abilities. So if you go Quas and Exhort, you're able to get uh, cold snap and your sun strike off, or have Ten them both on instant go. standby. Plus a third spell you can have ready, so you really Five have third three seconds. spells at your disposal instead of the original two. So it makes him a lot stronger in lane, and he's a very Reserve tough. Uh, he's a very strong mid as well. He's got the healing potential on Quas. Plus he has Exort just to give him some stupid damage. But you can go for Wex if you want for that move speed, and just go for that EMP build, which is a little bit stronger now, because EMP doesn't just drain your mana, it gives it to him. So that gets a little bit scummy if you're playing against an Invoker. Uh, and he's, he's very tough to beat mid, so at the moment we've got Rest, they're going to have that Dark Seer on the offlane, Nyx Assassin Visage, um, depending on a 2-1-2 or 2-2-1 build lineup, you'll see Nyx Assassin Visage, roaming support, safe lane or mid support. But for YSM, Lion on your support, Luna, easy safe lane farm. Batrider, probably have to go into the off lane or into the jungle at this stage because I think I think an Invoker should be able to beat beat Batrider in this situation. And Crystal Maiden, I don't believe I saw her getting... Uh, I, I'm surprised she got through the banning phase, to be honest. Uh, but she is going to be picked Ten up, and especially over that lion. But Crystal Maiden is a such a strong hero. I did speak to her about Five her a lot late uh, in the in the first game. But CM always been quite strong, and she's just got such great ganking potential Radiant level two. Fifth. But Leech's Prophet going to be the fifth ban for Rest, not wanting him to be against that in the offlane. So they're anticipating the bat right mid at this stage, and Gyrocopter will be banned out by YSM. Uh, he does have a flash farm ability that can contest Luna's farm, plus just deal massive damage in that safe lane. So he's going to be taken out of the pool, and now Rest probably looking towards a carry at this stage. They can, of course, go Ten towards another support if they want, to go. Um, and elect to send that Nyx into the middle lane, use Invoker as a hard Five carry. Seconds. But they're probably going to be wanting to maybe pick up something Reserve with a stun, time. and probably a ranged hero at that. Um, I'm just trying to think who's still in the pool that would be viable for their situation. And I... Uh, no... No real names kind of uh, come to mind. But I suppose look, they can go for something like a, a Sven would be quite strong with with, in, with the Dark Seer um, vacuum and war combo. I don't know. It's, it's a bit tough to think. But while we are looking at that Invoker. Gonna have that... Also, if they go up here with a global... There's not really any at the moment. Invoker Sunstrike, you can combine that with your Nyx Stun and your Visage Grave Chill or your Soul Assumption. You'll be able to deal just some massive damage to some poor target who, who's gonna be caught out so... possibly like your Lion or your Crystal Maiden. Um, and they're just gonna be able to get dropped quickly from just Ten laser beams from the sky. They're gonna pick up a Viper though. Viper is Dyer's such a strong hero. He's even stronger now that his poison attack doesn't have a cooldown like it used to. It used to be a uh, was it two two zero zero two two one zero on on his poison attack, but now it is zero at all levels. With I don't believe any changes to any of his other skills. Nope. Corrosive skin does not proc wall doom, so that's not going to be really relevant. But that nether toxin makes last hitting Ten a great deal easier, and corrosive to skin turns him from a carry into an anti carry as well. Any Five poor sod that attacks seconds. him is going to be movement slow, attack paid slow, and have their magic resistance lowered. Did you actually know I did that? Today I learned. Corrosive skin lowers your magic resistance, ladies and gentlemen. Mirana. And Mirana is going to be picked up as a. Offlane, but looks of things. Roidzy was playing that offlane before. So possibly Mirana offlane. 
Um, looks like HTE is going to be on that bat rider. He played the clockwork mid, so that is most likely the option. We're going to be seeing a personalized list of heroes. We're going to be seeing over on the rest side of the map. We'll be seeing Tondas playing that support Nyx Assassin. Kilted is going to be on the Viper. And Kilted was... Kilted was the Timber Saw last game, so he's going to be the safe lane farm. We're going to have Evil Twig, who is our lone druid. He's going to be off laning once again on the Darkseer. Lethal, your support, is going to be on the Visage. And Miggles on the Invoker, going to be down that middle lane. Over on YSM's side of the map, Roidzy heading towards that off lane at the moment, just going solo. We're going to have Talek on the Lion, up in the top lane. Crystal Maiden, Pudding Head, similarly up on the top lane with that Frey Farm Luna. HTE, the Bat Rider, is going to be riding his cool little bat, Bessie the Batmelion into the middle lane, and we will finally see a Wonderwalk on the Luna. Who was playing that Weaver last game? And it is good man to say GLHF, so we will drop those. And, oh, that is a horrible HUD. That's alright. We're going to go Tempest Wing. Seconds. So, shout out to Tondas for the Tempest Wing HUD. And at the moment, it looks like YSM trying to be aggressive with their... Uh, sorry, defensive with their... Sorry, rest. No, I'm just confused now. YSM actually being defensive with their warding, just trying to keep Windwalk and the Talik just safe up top. They've got a really lane ward down as well, just to see any TPs coming into that tower. But that even rest, not really being too aggressive with their warding at the moment. They haven't dropped the ward down just one. yet. Twig is going to be taking an invis a illusion rune for himself, and my overlay is still on, so let's just get rid of that. So, this is going to be game two of Southern Cross Dota Tides Wrath Season 3. This is the lower bracket in a best of three. This is game two between YSM and Rest. We can see one point over on YSM's side of the map. Head over to southerncrossdota.com, check out the forums, and of course, head over to the sponsor's website, TT Esports by Thermaltake. Check out some of their pretty gnarly gaming gear, www.ttesports.com. And you can check that out. It's pretty neat gear. Down on that bottom lane, Roidzy already taking a ton of harass from Viper and Lethal. And she's only gonna, already going to use that leap. It's on a 30 second cooldown. Just using that to stay alive and not take too much harass, but the damage could be done. She's taking a little bit of damage. Lethal just harassing her out. It is two on the bottom lane, two safe lane and solo off lane. And it looks like Talek is now going to come down and support Roidzy. Roidzy built up that massive farm last game, wanting to do it again. Talek's going to be supporting him oh once no. again. HG is going to be still in that middle lane, and Crystal Maiden is just... Why are people adding me on Steam? Go away. Hey, putting Head, going to pick up that early level 2 if he can. He's already taken a lot of experience. Just using that Frostbite to take out the Creep Wave, he's going to be able to pick up a very early level 2 and rotate into that middle lane with that, and that's going to do him wonders. So we're just going to keep a quick eye on him, see if he does pick up that level 2 or not. I think he's going to fall just a little bit short. Yes, he is. So, Viper. Oh, poor Viper. He has a win rate of 16%. Picked up six times with one win. The poor Denied. guy. He's been trying so, so hard. But we can see already Twig up on that offlane, having a great time against Luna. He's 8-1 and one in terms of last hits. Luna, poor girl. He's, she's 4-0, and zero, but that level 2 Iron Shell doing 50 damage per second, and it lasts 20 seconds on a 10 second cooldown. So he's just going to be able to keep spamming that on the creeps. He's actually going for a Stout Shield and a Boots of Speed, so not going for the Soul Ring, and possibly not a Bottle. He's going to have some issues with his mana sustainability, unless he's very careful. But he's also going to, to be... well, he's picked up level 4, so he's actually not being too bad at the moment. But Luna doesn't really have enough move speed just yet to stay away from those creeps, and she doesn't have enough life to keep doing it. So she's going to be struggling. HG are taking a little bit of damage from that hasted Nyx Assassin Tondas, using that mana burn to great success, burning down that mana pool of Batrider. And he's going to go around the tower and just get a couple more attacks off. Being very defensive, very smart play there from Tondas, not going into the tower range at all. He's still on full health. Great use of the haste rune. Uh, as well. And now Evil Twig on the top lane is taking a little bit of damage. He was frostbitten by Pudding Head. Pudding actually going for a level in the Arcane Aura instead of the Crystal Nova, strangely enough. So, a little more unlikely to, to pick up a, a kill in, the, in that regard. But it's, it's doing alright for itself. And now Meagles going on the aggressive on HG. He's going to throw the Cold Snap down. He's gone for two points in the Exhort, doing a lot of extra damage. He's got 18 additional damage because of those Exhort charge things. Orbs. Uh, that's going to just do massive damage. Poor HDE, struggling a bit. He's picked up the bottle nice and early. And there's a flame break coming out. He's actually gone two points in the napalm, one in the flame break, and one in the firefly, which is more or less standard. 
these days for Batrider, but he does struggle a lot in that middle lane now. He's going to take another Cold Snap, and HCA is just taking massive damage. And Invoker hasn't invoked another spell just yet. I don't know if he's realized his max spells is two or not. Um, or if he's just having a little bit of a brain fart. But he can easily invoke that for 20 measly mana. Uh, but we can't interfere with the game, so I'm not going to say anything to him. But if someone has him on Steam, send him a reminder. We have a look down on the bottom lane now. Kilted having plenty of free farm down there, and Mirana is going to be disconnected. So, just down the bottom, Kilted picking up 17 last hits at the moment, and Mirani, you can see, taking a little bit of damage uh, from that poison attack at the moment. Talek not receiving any harass. He's still on full health, and Lethal could be able to... No, he's not really going to pick up. And we've got some drawings on the map. I'm going to interfere with that, just like, me, but nothing. Um, we're going to have a four minute rune up very soon, and depending on who gets that, there could be a kill in that middle lane. HGA does have an empty bottle at the moment, he wants to pick that up as quick as he can. And that would be why Roids is actually taking so much damage, ladies and gentlemen, he's been disconnected. And you can see, that poison act just does a little bit of damage. And why is everyone adding me? I guess I'm popular tonight. This is this is definitely odd. But oh, Batrider looks for a rune. He's not going to find anything though. Unfortunately, the Nyx Assassin, Sneaky Little Tondas, did pick that rune up on the top lane. So he's going to be able to pick that up nice and easy, and without too much of an issue. HTE, he's going to have a lot of trouble in that middle lane. He doesn't realize Tondas is up here. That vision just cutting out a bit short. And he could be in trouble if he comes out too aggressively. He's got the courier coming out now, trying to bottle crow. But is Tonda's going to be able to pick up that courier or no? HG is going to send that courier back to base. It is quite a slow courier. He's going to have to surge that though. And Tonda's, what are you doing, buddy? Are you going to go in or not? Come on. I want to see a kill. First blood. There's the mana boots on the Dark Seer already. So he's going for the early mana boots as opposed to the Soul Ring, which is equally as good. But we can see Dark Seer, he's got very low mana at the moment, he's got low health as well, he's just going to try and get himself back to base. And it looks like they've realised. They do have the ward here, so they will have seen that Tondas is going back, sorry, that Twig is going back to base now. And they're going to be able to give that Luna a lot more room to farm. He's already picked up level 6, she should have level 6, she should have level 6 by the first time blood. that Twig gets back. And there's the first blood. First Tondas blood. rotating around, he's going to come around and pick up that first blood. Apologies for missing that, but Miggles... The cold snap, he's realized he's got a second level now, and he's going to use that meteor to great success. That meteor does huge damage at all levels. So, good play there. First blood will go to rest this game. Now, Roy's on that bottom lane. He's going to take a solar. Su uh, oh, the arrow's not going to find anybody, though. It was a ballsy shot, but that sacred arrow will not find anybody. No catches mitt like we saw in the MIFC vs. YSM game, where we saw Monk from, from uh, SYF Gaming catching every arrow that was shot from Miracle Drug. It was like he had a magnet or a catcher's mitt, but he was just taking every single arrow, the poor guy. But we won't be seeing that this game. That mirror arrow did unfortunately come just a little bit too wide. And now Twig. Twig being a little bit ballsy. He's gonna, could be caught out here. Pudding Head is coming up. He's going to drop the Frostbite. He's going to drop that Frostbite a little bit early. Twig. Oh, here's the Eclipse though. Is that going to find? There's one more. There it is. The Eclipse and a extra Lucid Beam from Windwalk. Just coming out. And good play from Pudding Head as well. Uh, just managed to pick up that kill. And now is Luna gone? I thought I saw a Midas, so I don't know what I'm seeing. But Luna's going to pick up her treads now. Good play. Miggle's up in that top lane now. He's going to try and snipe an extra kill. But Windwalk popping a healing salve is not going to have too much issue. Her boots are on the strength though, so she's not going to heal as much as she probably would have liked. But now, we've still got about 15 seconds on that invisibility. And now Darkseer is going to come. He's going to try and get a little bit of extra damage. Windwalk doesn't know what's happening. Here comes the media. The Deafening Blast strikes out as well. Windwalk takes a bit of damage. He's probably going to get away. No, Twig's chasing hard. He is chasing. Is he going to be able to pick up Windwalk? No, there's the wall. Batrider is going to teleport up. HTE is going to get the lasso off and send him into a Firefly. Twig is going to go down to Pudding Head's Crystal Nova. And now Miggles is the one in danger. Talek's going to rotate up now. He's got two points in the Hex, two in the Earth Spike. He's going to throw the Hex down first. Miggles taking a little bit of damage. He's got two procs of the Sticky Napalm. And there it is. Miggles 
He's going to pop that Ghost Walk. I don't believe there's sentries at all. Flame Break comes out, and he's not going to find him. Niggles is going to keep his life through luck. Talek up here now. He's not going to find him, and too late. Miggles has gone home. So, unfortunately, uh, they didn't actually manage to take out... Um, take out the Luna, as, as they originally planned, but they did manage to pick up... Who did they pick up? They picked up the Batrider. In s yeah, that was in the middle lane, though, so... Dyer's didn't actually manage to pick up... Under siege. They, sorry, they, did, they picked up the Darks... Uh, YSM managed to pick up the Darks here in the end, in the... In the counter initiation, so Dyer's very good play from uh, from Pudding Head. That's uh, two kills, unfortunately, going to toward, towards Pudding Head. The Evil Twig has died, but Evil Twig has picked up level six. He's actually gone for that wall of the replica, uh, which we saw before. But that's quite uh, strange to, to pick up that wall so early. You're more likely to go for the early levels in vacuum. Maybe get the wall at nine, ten, or even eleven. Uh, kills are down on that bottom lane. Though. He's had great farm down here. He's forty-three and eight. Uh, poor Marana. Barely looks at the creep. She's only 11 and 1 at the moment. Visage doing a wonderful job denying. Zero last hits as is expected and 17 denies. So he's doing pretty great down here at the moment. The Viper, he's got 1500 gold in his pocket at the moment. So he's got plenty of choice. Um, you know, all builds were straight into Shadow Blade or an Arganims, but in this sort of game, maybe a BKB is going to be the best option for himself. He's got natural damage because of Nether Toxin, and he's got a huge slow with his Viper Strike and the Poison Strike combo. So it really just depends on how he wants to play things. If he want to be aggressive or not. Apparently I'm having in-game audio issues. Uh, Sophie, can you confirm this? Shout out to Sophie who's in stats and making sure you guys in the Twitch chat are eligible for item drops as well. I forgot to thank Sophie at the, early, at the start of the game. And I can see a Sunstrike coming out. No, where'd that go? Okay, so... Hmm. Well, apparently... I'm not having in-game audio issues, so I can't really check that, guys, um, <coughs> unfortunately. Um, but I did hear a Sunstrike go out, and there's the Firefly from HD. He's going to go forward. He's going to try and Flame Break Miggles. He will catch him, but not doing a whole lot just there at the moment, so no Lasso is going to be popped. We've almost got 50 last hits up on that Dark Seer as well. He's picked up the Mana Boots and about 800 gold. He's also going to take himself an Invisibility Rune. HTA was heading towards that. Now that Iron Shell Invisible just doing massive damage to HTA. We can see that health just wiping away. It's going to have to be TB support. He's going to go in. He's going to try and stick in on HTA. The Lasso is going to come out. I don't know how smart an idea that is. Evil Twig doesn't have that Iron Shell anymore. Passage will pick up that kill there. Good play from Lethal. Tell you what's more coming in. Soul Assumption will fly out onto Talic. Pick up a double kill. I mean, the Freezing Field from Pudding. It's going to come out. Rest Lethal is going to be able to walk away from that wind walk. It's coming as well. The arrow does find Lethal. Good support from Roidzy. Hits that arrow beautifully. And Luna going to take that kill with a Lucent Beam. So she's going to pick herself up a kill there. But Lethal did give himself two kills in that engagement. But we are just having a quick look at the Gryph. 1500 gold towards Rest at the moment. The experience... A little bit of a volcano going up and down, up and down, up and down, and it's up to about 250 experience. Only a slight XP lead towards rest at the moment, but the gold in their favor, and a lot of that is on the Viper, who's picked up the Ogre Club, so he's either going through the BKB or the Arganims. No pub Dota builds here, sadly. What about Luna? Is she going? Luna's going towards the Helm of the Dominator first. Over on Dark Sea, he's got the Headdress going straight towards the Mech. And Invoker, what's he picked up? He's picked up his phase boots and about 1,600 gold. He has got the braces, so he could be going towards the drums. But the other sort of items you go on an Invoker, Force Staff, or your Yules. Um, especially Yules in this case, where he's gone, the Exhort. You can just drop your Sun Strike, your Chaos Meteor, and your Deafening Blast, and just Ruffle Stomp Wombo Combo somebody. Oh, I can hear Sunstrike. No, nothing coming out. Lion, his smoke's gonna be popped, and there's HT. Oh, the Windwalk. 
Gonna pop his ellipse. He's doing too much damage to him though. Is he gonna go down? He's gonna take one final attack and he's gonna go down to Meagles. But Talek's gonna come in. He's gonna drop the... Is he gonna go down? Evil Twig. Ooh. Twig's coming in, drops the wall and it manages to take out Talek just in time. Meagles surviving with about 150 HP, being very, very close there. He's actually got 2.5k gold up now, so he can buy a lot of things depending on what he wants to go. And Twig's gonna try and push into this middle lane now. And he's actually managed to gaunt himself, uh, what's he got himself? He's managed to pick up his buckler now, so he's going to be very close to that mechanism. Uh, about 700 gold off, 850, 750, 750 gold off, so he's not too far. Attacked. Meanwhile, down on the bottom, Viper, killed him, missed him, killed him, still able to just free farm him here, Sunstrike, where's Radiant's Sunstrike going off? He tried to hit Windwalk, attack. Windwalk did actually this manage to dodge it though, and we are going a BKB on Viper, so pretty standard build, We'd, we've got the Morbid Mask up, no, we've only got the regular Morbid Mask onto the Luna now, she's got the Ogre Club as well. Uh, so she's going straight towards that BKB. And she's using the Lucent Beam. Oh, Arrow flies out, but he flies too far. So, unfortunately, not Guys, hitting him there. Um, bit of bad luck, but now he Tonda's. No. He's come down as well. He hasn't got enough mana for the Vendetta just yet. He should have that in about 20 seconds or so. And we've got the Familiars, and I can hear a smoke. Tonda's going to smoke himself up now. He wants to try and get a sneaky kill. Lethal's going to come around as well and help with the rotation. There's no familiars up. They're going to be spotted out, though. And they're going to move next to those ancients. But in the middle lane, Meagle's now using two of those forged spirits just to take down that tower. Those spirits are quite tanky. 600 HP, hitting for 56 each. And they're just doing some, some pretty attacked. severe damage to that tower at the moment. Invoker going towards attacked. the Yule Scepter of Divinity. The Cyclone Stick. So that's just going to be able to... Oh, Sunstrike doesn't find Pudding. That would have killed Pudding had it have hit, but unfortunately it didn't. That's a really cool courier. Trial of the Amanita. And then we've got the Silly Rabbit as well. That's such a cool courier. Lethal. Do you want to trade me that courier after the game? You definitely do. So what Miggles can do now with that Yule Scepter is he can just Yule someone, and with the second spin, after that hero completes the second spin in the Yules, he can drop the Sunstrike the Chaos Media and the Deafening Blast and that should do most, more than enough damage to actually kill them depending on the level of Exort. Although he hasn't maxed it out so it might not just kill them yet but Dyer's it will do some severe damage. Under and there's an arrow. Arrow's gonna fly, it's gonna catch Lethal for some pretty big damage. He's gonna take a five second stun. The tower in the middle lane is gonna go down. Miggles earned himself that. Crystal Maiden's actually just picked up a hand of Midas. Royzy's taking a little bit of damage. He's gonna try and fight this tier one tower down in the bottom lane. Royzy and Windwalker, they're gonna try and deny it. The two sisters of the moon. And Nova. Oh, good deny. Chris coming out from Windwalk now. He's gonna take a Viper Strike. The Soul Assumption is gonna fly in though. And now Windwalk, gonna go down. Viper and Vassar are just doing more than enough damage to take him down. But the Dark Seer did go down on that on that bottom lane as well, because of that eclipse. Viper now going to pick himself up that BKB, and CM going for that Midas nice and early, and she's going to have, be able to just give herself an extra farm. She's able to buy those wards for, for constantly through the game. He's going to keep it alive. I can hear Batrider going off. Where's my mouse? I was fixing my microphone. But he's going to catch Invoker. Invoker's is going to Yule's himself at the moment. He's on very low HP. He's going to be dusted, so no Ghost Walk. He's going to throw on Meteor, though. It's not going to find Talik, though, and he's going to go down there. Pudding Head just getting the last hit there. But now Tondas, he's up here. He's got the Vendetta on himself. He's going to try and find someone. He's not going to find anybody, though. I think he knows Crystal Maiden's nearby. He does. He's going to find Pudding and He's got no mana to follow it up, though, just yet. He's waiting for the TP support. He's able to block. Oh, he's going to miss the Vendetta proc, though. Pudding Head, not going to take too much damage. There's additional support coming in from Viper, but now Twig. Twig, is he going to chase? No, he's not. Twig is not going to chase that engagement. Fifteen, sixteen minutes. At the moment, we got a 5k advantage in favor of rest. And the experience, though, the experience is almost spot on. About 100 experience in it. Quick squeeze of the items, got the attacked. mana boots under the Nyx Assassin. We're going to have Viper taking that BKB, we've almost got a mech out onto the Dark Seer. Visage hasn't really picked up any items yet, just a Tranquil Boots. On Invoker we've got Staff of Wizardry, coming towards the Force Staff or an Argonims on Meagles, as well as that Yules. roidsy has got the Phase Boots and the Aquila, we've got Dyer's not much on the Talic. Pudding Head's picked up that Midas. Batrider still going towards that Blink Dagger, he's always got enough gold for that. And Windwalk the Luna, picked up the Ogre Club and the Morbid Mask. Batrider does now have his thing though. 
Uh, the Blink Dagger and Visage has the Medallion of Courage. They did attack. also, the team of Rest took oh, that top tower no. just then. Either. With Invoker getting another tower for himself. That's going to give him a lot of gold. Radiance middle tower what is he under building? Radiance Luna middle tower does get to trade forward. that middle tier 1 tower though while she can teleport back up the top now. And we've also got Batrider going to teleport in. Tondas finds a kill on Royalty. Royalty, the Marana, is going to buy back. And there's the Yules. The Media is not going to find it though. The Batrider did blink out of the way. And first is going to fly from Luna. No, it's not. This putting it, he's going to go down there. The Viper Strike onto Batrider. He's not going to take too much damage. The BKB from Kills are doing a lot of damage. And now, Royce is in trouble. Lethal and Tonda's trying to get on him. But now Twig, he's got the Iron Shell on him. Windwalk. Oh, he's not going to hit it. The Soul Summon's going to fly. Eclipse is going to come out from Windwalk now. Didn't come out before. No. Tonda's going to be able to get that kill. No. Meagles no. did manage to pick it up. Two for one trade going in favor of Rest. I heard an arrow fly yet. Not going to fire anybody though. Royce, just not managing to pick up a kill there. And it looks like now, Rest are going to back out. Not being too aggressive. They definitely came out pretty well on that fight. They took out both Luna and Crystal Maiden and forced a buyback on on Mirana. So definitely coming out with a nice nice bit of a lead there. They're up to 5k gold now and the experience is back in their favour. So they are taking a little bit of an advantage. This is kind of the same position we saw YSM in, in last game. Uh, the, the leaderboard doesn't really do it justice. We've only got... And just because Miggles has been taking out the towers, we've still got the... Uh, Tier 1 tower on both bottom and top lane uh, at the moment. So there's still two towers to cash in there. Whereas all Tier 1 towers are gone for uh, for YSM at the moment. So that's where a lot of the gold has come from. Plus well, you've got a Midas on Crystal Maiden. That's giving her a lot of extra gold because she can just buy pretty much just wards until she drops. There we go. Sophie, do you know a stat request from the guys in Twitch? Do you know how many times Hand of Midas has been picked up on Crystal Maiden? And Tonda's going to throw the Impale. He doesn't manage to find it though. Now Pudding Head. Oh, Pudding. Saw's right there. there. Tonda's doesn't take the arrow. He's going to go down though. And there is a big hit from Visage. Soul Summon doing massive damage. Now Pudding Head's going to be in a lot of trouble. The dust will fly out. Meagles is going to get caught by the lasso. And he's stuck in the Firefly now. Lion's going to come and he's going to finger of death him. And Meagles is going to go down there. The Earth Spike just finishing him off. But now Vitalik going to have to run for his life. Windwalk's going to throw a Lucent Beam. The Soul Assumption comes out onto Windwalk though. He's just he's running for his life now. Flame Break's going to come out from Batrider who's still retreating. But two for two trade going for both teams there. We've got no, the Nyx Assassin and the Invoker being, being dropped. Tondas and Meagles. And then we had Mirana, Roidzi and who's the CM? We've got Putting Head on that CM. So a two for two trade. Um... A support and a mid against a support and a carry. Oh, sorry, support and an offlane. So, more or less an equal trade, really. Um, who picked up the kills, though? And there goes Sophie. Just a quick disconnect. So, at the moment, Invoker has picked up a four star for himself here. Yeah. Viper, got a Blade of Alacrity going towards a Manta style, Manta style, and is Roidzy going to be caught out on this bottom lane, the next assassin, the Tondas, he's stalking him hard, he's waiting for the support, Tilted is coming around to support, and here he goes, the Vendetta and the Sunstrike, oh, Roidzy, no, he's going to be able to get away, he's got the leap out, the Sunstrike and the Vendetta Impale not doing enough. Those familiars are chasing Roidzy hard. He's got 90 HP, but a great leap. Managing to dodge the auto attack has just kept him alive. And really, Kilted sort of thought the kill was secured and didn't bother attacking in that instance. Um, a little bit overconfident there from Kilted, expecting that kill to be taken, but Roidzy with a very good leap, managing to hold on to his life and... Bad luck, but great awareness as well from Invoker, dropping that Sunstrike very quickly there. So a great job from him. For now, Rest going to advance onto that tier tower down on the bottom lane. And Batrider's going to fly. He's going to pop that Firefly now, giving himself the extra vision. Uh, Kilted going to pop the Argonim set the BKB. He, actually, he's going to try and lasso him, but he's not going to go anywhere. Viper's going to get dropped. The Eclipse is going to come out from Windwalk now. Kilted and Tonda take massive damage. The EMP is going to get dropped. And there's the vacuum, and it's a bit of a vacuum oh, EMP combo, down. draining all the mana from Talik. Talek is going to end up going down to Visage. <coughs> Soul Assumption is going to fly Windwalk. Down Dyer's about 200 HP. 
So far, two heroes down. Luna and Sam both very low, putting and Roidzi. And now Rest should be able to take this tier two tower with relative ease. And they're going to keep pushing. There's two heroes down at the moment. They've got a lot of their health up. There's still a vendetta on two Tondas. And is Sophie back? Sophie has reconnected the game. And now Rest going to use their advantage to take out the Rashan. There's a pipe, a uh, Hood of Defiance up onto Dark Sand now, going towards that pipe of Insight, which they're going to need to dodge just Eclipse and Batrider's Firefly. And it looks like they're going to contest this. Pudding making his way downtown. He's been caught out by the Observer Ward. Batrider's here as well. Batrider's going to try and steal it. He's dropping the Sticky Napalm as well, but not... Oh, CM! She gets pushed out of the Sunstrike by that Deafening Blast, but Viper Kilted will take that kill. HTE is going to try and lasso Kilted. Roids, he does drop an arrow onto Lethal. He's stuck here doing nothing. The BKB from Kilted does fly out. There goes a solid assumption from Lethal. Long range onto Roids. He's going to drop him. But Luna will take out Kilted's life in a trade. Lethal now trying to go for Windwalk. Windwalk is cold snapped up. The auto attack's coming out. The fire, the flame rig will come out from the Batrider onto Miggles. Talek is coming up here. He's going to get dunked as well. Luna and Windwalk and Talek both going down to Don as the next assassin. But now HTE, he's going to be stuck up here. He's going to be Yules. Is there going to be? No, there's nothing to follow it up, unfortunately. The Blink's going to come out. Tonda's Impale will not find its mark. And now Batrider going to want to stick around and try and pinch that Aegis. But he has got a full inventory. He tries to flame break them up onto the cliff. He's going to get caught in a tornado, though. He's only got a couple seconds. There it is. Now he's kind of stuck here. He can't really see into that Rashan pit at the moment because of where he is. That Forge Spirit's trying to scout out, see if he can get an auto attack off. Putting head down here at the Rashan pit to try and... Uh, kind of contest it, but now Miggles will hit hit with that Chris Nova, and he's going to be able to back to that middle lane. Woo! So that fight going definitely in favour of Team Arrest. Rest, 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 rest. That's going to give him a nice gold advantage at the moment and experience. Um, and I could look at the items. Twenty-five minute analysis. We've got the BKB Yasha onto Kilted now. He's picked up a Yasha in the meantime. We've got that. Almost got a pipe out onto Evil Twig. We've still got the Medallion onto Lethal. He's almost. He's going towards that Arganims now. Picking up the Energy Booster and the Ogre Club. We've got the Force Staff and the Yules on the Invoker. He's trying to get towards that Arganims as well. That Rider at the moment trying to pick someone up. I don't know if he's going to be successful or not, but now Lethal. He could be spotted out. Pudding's going to chase it. And Pudding, is he, he's found Lethal, he's just trying to stalk him at the moment. Batrider's going to find someone else though, Tond is going to get caught. He's going to be lassoed, no he's not going to be taking too much damage. And Lethal, he's now stuck here, he's got, oh, he's got a lot of ways to send money. He's going to drop the freezing food, trying to take a kill. But no, the Wall of Illusions, the Wall of Illusions is going to come out there now from Twig. He's going to go... In. I can hear a Sunstrike. No, Royce is not going to get hit by the Sunstrike. Eclipse is going to pop from Windwall. Tondas will go down. Twig's in a lot of trouble at the moment now. Is Twig going to go down? I can hear a Viper. Viper takes out Talek with that Viper Strike combo, but a long flame break will take out HTE. The MP is going to be dropped. Windwalk. No, Miggles is going to pick up a kill now. No, Viper takes the kill. The Tornado from Miggles is going to find that HTE. He's got Firefly in four seconds. He's going to stay alive for then. He's going to drop a couple of, of sticky napalms, and he's going to be able to go. No. He's going to be less. He's going to be sent to the air, and he's going to blink north. He's going to get away without too much trouble. The Sun Strike, not in the right direction. So, HTE. Could be alright. Here comes Kilted though. Kilted trying to chase after him. He's not going to find him. And HTE is going to be able to teleport back to base. Four for two trade there. Going in favour of of, uh, of Rest. Doing very well in that team fight. To go quickly back to the items. Mirana trying to pick up a Yasha. She's not really managing to get too far into that. Talek almost got a four staff up. We've got CM the Pudding Head. Still got the Minus but no other items. We've got a four staff and the Blink out onto HTE now. But that Luna... Uh, we'll be able to pick up her Helm of the Dominator. She's got the BKB as well. And that's down to... Still on 9 charges. But Viper's BKB should be a bit lower. Yeah, Viper's BKB is down to 6 charges at the moment. Plus he's got that Yasha. And there should be some items. What's coming out? We have a Manta style coming out for Kilted now. So that's what he's found up in the last little bit. And Ton is using that hatred. He's trying to scare out his spotted Talek. He doesn't want to dive under the tower. He's walked straight into a sentry ward, though, and he's going to now dodge that, though. A blind... Oh, he dodges a stun. He dodges a sacred arrow. Oh, he's in a large group of people. Putting it. Going to get splattered, though. The Vendetta Impale, followed by a Sunstroke from Miggle. He's going to do too much damage for that Putting it to stand up to. But Tonda's being very ballsy, trying to throw a combo out amongst four heroes, but he was outside of this sentry range. Plus, he had the Ace rune, so he shouldn't have had too much of a trouble... Uh, too much... 
lockdown on him. And he's ended up surviving. Batrider HA is going to come out. He's going to blink and force that one to Miggles, the Invoker. Miggles is going to be caught under that tower now. Taunt is also there. The wall of replicas down. The vacuum did come out as well. And now Sam, I can hear a freezing feel. That didn't last too long. Now Talek, Talek could go down. There's a slow assumption from Lethal coming out there. Viper and Lethal just cleaning up that fight. It's another four for one trade. And they're going to be rest now going to be able to take that tier two tower in that middle lane. Tond is still trying to play defensive. He's picked up a blink dagger for himself. And oh, Windwalk's going to clean up. Poor Tondas just sitting up there. But Tondas, get dunked. He was just sitting there. A single loosened beam was all it took to end his life. Good awareness from uh, Windwalk there. Managing to spot her out with her additional uh, with her vision. That did to down one will go down. This is solo assumption to Pudding Head. Pudding Head's taking a lot of damage. He's going to get high ground though. He should be safe. Kilted doesn't want to break that high ground. He did have the surge if he wanted to, to push up there, but not willing to do so. Why is that graph in a weird order? There we go. So, a large advantage going in favour of rest at the moment. You can see the experience was pretty static until that about 22-3 minute mark. But now, huge golden experience lead going towards rest. They want that tier 2 tower. The pings are coming out from Mr. Tondas, Captain Tondas, Drafter Tondas. There's a quick break in uh, in team fights. This teams have both gone back to farming. Check out our sponsors, TTE Esports by Thermal Take. Head over to their website, www.tteesports.com. Check out their Facebook or their Twitter as well, Thermal Take AU or just TTE Esports. We'll go back to the game. HC is going to blink onto the Bat Rider, onto Viper. Sorry, he's popped the BKB, but the blink and the force are going to be too much. Kilted. He's got four on him. He's going to try and take down Roydzy in the meantime, but he's going to go down. Batrider, Mr. HT will find that kill there. Getting the Dominating Street gold for 600 gold for himself. Great awareness and a good rotation. Good use of Moonlight Shadow from that Marana. So we have a kill. They're going to head to the Tier 1 tower. Twig is up here. I don't know if he's going to defend that on his own, though. That tower is probably going to go down quite quickly. Radiance top tower. is going to come. They're going to try and fortify it. Don't know if it was really worth it. And the arrow does just narrowly miss Twig. Viper's going to buy back. He's going to teleport up there, though. And here comes Viper. The tornado is going to catch. Oh, it's going to catch Luna and the Batrider. Windwalk will pop the BKB in Eclipse. Batrider, HD, going to go down. Nice and easy. Roidzy from the Marana also went down as well. Tonda's just picking him up with a Vendetta. Uh, so, and the Blink Dagger, just good play there from Rest, taking out two kills in, in a defense of a tier 1 tower. And I think, yeah, Windwalk's had to teleport back to base, he's going to try and farm out Bot now. 2.5k gold in favor of him, he's, he's picking up a little bit of farm for himself at the moment, currently leading the way for, uh, for YSM's gold. Uh, also head over to southerncrossdota.com. Check out the SCD forums, the guys who are hosting Tide's Wrath for you. Sign up for the latest in the Australian and New Zealand scene, uh, the Dota 2 scene. And of course, there is a giveaway. I can't remember the link, but if you're in Twitch chat, it is there. Um, so if you can just chuck that in game, if you could. Um, that's for a giveaway. Um, so join into that. Some pretty decent prizes, I think, them from TT Sports as well. Uh, so sign up for the giveaway, try and win some prizes, you could end up with like a new mouse or a keyboard or a headset or Radiant something cool like that. Is being um, and for those of you who don't know, I am Shads, I go by Shads, with two slashes in my name. All my YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, it's all the Shadstar, T-H-E-S-H-A-D-Z-T-A. Um, most of those stuff are new, so if it doesn't look popular, don't be too scared. Sign up, leave a comment, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Any feedback's appreciated, and make sure you head over to the Twitch. Shout out to all those guys in the Twitch chat, Miz and Heatvist, keeping the, the chat alight. Um, and of course, shout out to Sophie, who's in here with me, uh, making sure you guys in the Twitch channel are eligible for drops. So big props to Sophie, and as well Naga, who's not actually here, but these guys have been sitting on in every game so far in the tournament, making sure you guys are eligible for drops. Uh, Versages for me almost did go down there. Windwalk's going to try and take them out with the Glaive. Just a couple of attacks, and they're going to take a lot of damage. You can see them almost going down, but good marker from Lethal is going to keep them alive. So we should be experiencing a fight very soon. Rashan's on full health. I know both teams want to take him. They tried before. Tonda's is sitting invisible still. He's picked up level 14, so he's got a level 2 Vendetta. 400 damage, but it is only a 35 second duration, 60 second cooldown. Not at the max level of the maximum efficiency. Of it's always up, or you're always invisible. But a gem going to be brought out by Mr. Darks here. It's quite tanky at the moment. 
I'm gonna push up into that bottom line. And it looks like Wind Warp uh, leading the charge into that middle lane for Y7. And look at the three simultaneous TBs from from Kilted, from Mr. Passage, and I can see the long range tornado is not going to find anybody though. Viper Kilted will deny the tower, and there was five man TP support coming up from Rest there, wanting to defend that to two tower. And Batrider going to pick himself up a nice pair of boots of travels. Uh, single boot, but he's got to get boots for his bat as well. Six shoes. He's only got one shoe. He needs six of them. So he's going to be able to go around the map. He's got a lot more glow, uh, got a lot more map control now that he's got Radiant's those bots. Down, able to teleport to multiple attack. lanes, and he's going to Wait, head towards the Roche. He's going to pop that Firefly, though, just to keep an eye on Roche. The Familiar is also keeping an eye on it. The Medallion is going to come out. But Miggles and the Team of Rest don't attacked. really want to go onto that Roshan just yet. And it looks like YSM waiting to regather their... their their thoughts and head towards that rush pit. Radiant's but now Rest gonna head in. The tornado's gonna find out the Batrider. EMP is gonna get dropped as well. And HC losing a bit of mana. He got vacuumed into the rush pit. Great vacuum by Twig. But the force up gonna keep him alive. Oh Tonders, what are you doing? He's gonna be dust and he's gonna get picked off there. He was just out of place and the uh, unfortunately just got spotted out. Now a bit of anticipation, I think. But he's going to have to buy back as well and head to that bottom tier 2 tower. Bottom tier 1 tower, actually, and head back into middle lane. And is HTE the one being too aggressive now? He's over to the far side, a bit far left. About three, about 4,000 units actually left. He's about just north of the Ancients camp. Rest. Going to head back into a, the Roshan camp for round 2. The viewers who are just tuning in, this is a best of 3 between Rest and... YSM, the loser will be out of the tournament, and a tornado is going to fly. HCE trying to get a lasso and a onto Lethal, but Lethal just getting caught out. Oh, sorry, that right getting caught out and vacuumed in. The long finger of death is going to go out from Talek onto that Visage. Sun strikes out, it's not going to find anyone. Windwalk's going to pop that Eclipse. He's found a lot of fairies, he's going to get stunned. He seems going to be able to back away nicely. The deafening blast from Miggles, just keeping them away. Kilden's going to pick up the Aegis of the Immortal. There's an arrow he's going to find. It's going to find Miggles in the bum. He takes the arrow from behind, but so far a two for one trade going in favor of Rest. Radiant they are uh, the Batrider and the Sister Maiden siege. both down for YSM at the moment, just the Visage down for Rest. Rest with a clear advantage 12k gold, 10k experience, and they've just got superior team fight at this stage. That Batrider has had a chance to get the pick off the gem on the Dark Seer, doing wonders for their team. And I, th I don't know if uh, they're going to be able to break high ground just yet or not. They've got about 15 seconds to do so. They can do a little bit of damage to that tier 3 tower. There is Visage with an Argonim, so that tower will probably go down quite quickly with the Familiars. Sam just sort of peppering. Kilted's going to take a big sacred arrow. Blink in from Tondas. He's going to try and find the Impale, but he's not going to hit it. Hex from Talek and Roids. He's going to drop a Star Storm as well. Now Talek's the one in trouble. Here comes the Batrider. He's going to blink in. He four stuffs Miggles back. The Viper will go down. He's still got the Aegis though. Miggles being aggressive, four stuffs himself back in, he's going to yules himself, is he going to try and drop a meteor or not? He's going to get stunned though, he's going to end up going down here. A four man gank, a four man destruction onto himself, but Rest making use of that distraction to take out that tier 3 tower, there's going to be another blink from the Batrider, blink straight into familiars, he's going to be able to go no further, Moonlight Shadow trying to get out there, he's going to spot out Kilted who's got the Manta Star, putting heads, trying to catch up and there's a long range arrow, is it going to fly? No it doesn't. Twig's going to come to his teammate's aid and Surge kilted out. Kilted the high priority target at the moment and Twig, beautiful teamwork, just surges him away, surges him back to safety. But Rest, trading the Invoker there, Mr. Miggles, for that tier 3 tower, so really kind of worth it to break that high ground. They did also lose the Aegis as well though, unfortunately. There's another arrow that's going to fly and Twig just dodges it. He did almost walk into it. And, oh, HC being very ballsy there. He's trying to look to blink in. He's going to force stuff himself back up the cliff and just kind of head back. Where did the gem go? Haste. I can't see it. That's really disappointing. Radiance bottom tower is right, being that's, attacked. That's just plain disappointing. But you probably already knew that. So at the moment, Windwalk, he's picked up a Yasha now. He's also got three and a bit K gold, so he can pick up the Manta style if he wants to go for, for that option. He does still have seven charges on that BKB. Or seven Radiant second charge on the BKB. Crystal May now getting himself a man. 
and there goes the tier one tower finally. Pudding's going to take that. Batrider blinking forward into Firefly, those creeps. Just try and drop those. And rest. Rest is smoked up. Top's going to lead the way now. He's being surged in. He's going to get past the Meteor. The Tornado's going to find Roidsy beautifully. The Meteor's going to get dropped onto HTA. HTA's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to go down there. The Cold Snap's just doing too much. Combined with Viper. Viper will get up the last hit. That He's going to killing spree now. And Tondas. Tondas is just trying to cut away those creeps. It's probably better if Viper does tank those. He's got the Reavers. He's quite tanky. Plus corrosive skin. Will make the creeps just get pretty much slammed by him. But now rest. Their whole team is alive. They've only used the Dark Seer ulti. Visage is familiar. He's still got them up. 150 seconds before he can resummon them, though. And he does have three familiars, ladies and gentlemen. So Twig, going to lead the way. Twig managing to get himself a Blink Dagger now as well. But they need to push up. But I don't know if now's the right time or not. They can get this split push going if they really want to. Uh, middle, looks like it's pushing in at the moment. Top lane. Kind of pushing uh, back a bit. There is a catapult up at the moment. So that's going to push in. But high ground will be broken. EMP is going to drop the kilt. He's going to drop that BKB now. Is he going to try and charge? He's going to drop the Viper Strike. He's going to get stunned by Sacred Arrow there. Now, Roy, is he going to pop that Moonlight Shadow in a defensive manner? He's not going to do too much, though. Twig does have the gem. They're going to try and take that Tier 3 tower out. Talik going forward. A very aggressive Earth Spike coming out there. He's taking a lot of damage. The Chaos Meteor will fall. Batrider gets that, the Blink Lasso off. Tondas is going to go down the next session, and now Windwall copping the Eclipse. He's chasing down T Twig and Lethal. Lethal in a lot of trouble. Lethal is going to go down the out of Windwall with one final Lucent Beam. HT taking a lot of damage from those Familiars, but High Ground successfully defended. Two kills going in towards YSM, and a defensive EMP drop. They did have to traverse that, and oh, Talico the long range Finger of Death. He's going to go down with a beautiful Sunstrike and Kilted. Managing to pick it up with the corrosive skin as well. And then Meagles gets frostbitten. He's going to stay. Oh, he's still alive. He's got the Yules. He's going to be able to keep stay alive and kilted. Now using another Viper Strike. He's going to get dropped down though. Rana just managing to pick up that kill and Windwalk. Staying alive. Cold Snap does come out now. HTE. This fight isn't just over yet. Meagles trying to keep it alive. He's forced stuff himself away. Evil Twig's heading back to base. And Arrow's going to fly. It's not going to pick up though. And Flame Break onto Miggles though. He's still trying to run. He's trying as hard as he can. He's going to go for the TP. It's Lasso. Lasso is up. HC is going to catch Miggles now. He's going to keep the sticky napalm on him. Miggles also going to take Crystal over. He's going to get Yules once again. And he's, he's going to now pop the Ghost Walk. But a good Flame Break from HT. He's going to find a kill there. And that was a pretty nice snipe, I must say. Good anticipation of where the Invoker was going to go. And he's netted himself a kill. Great play from YSM. Really coming out on top of that fight. We should see a slight drop. Yes, 2k gold advantage. Sorry. Three, oh, about 3k gold now. The difference only 9 instead of 12k. 12K. So are YSM coming for that late game pullback? They do... They do probably have the late game. They've got the Luna. They've got the Mirana. Both have Manta styles now. They've also got that Batrider for a quick pickoff who's looking towards that BKB at the moment. Mirana's gone that Hand of Minus, so she'll be able to scale quite well. Plus, you've got a Lion who's able to drop that Finger of Death on any poor hero that gets in his way. But on, on rest side, they do have that Viper who's so hard to kill, who's almost picked up that hard. He does have enough gold for it. He's going to go get his other thing. Now the health booster, vitality booster. That's coming back for him. He's got Massage. He's got his... Uh, going for a Scythe of Vice. He's got the ultimate orb up already. Dark Seer. Still got the mech, the pipe, the blink for himself. And Tynas, of course, who's also got that blink dagger. Both teams at the moment have great pickoff and great team fight as well. But all it really takes is for, for, for Dark Seer to get a good vacuum wall off. And rest can can take a, a quite an easy fight, really. Uh, and look at that. that. That gold is just dropping at the moment. YSM. Better late than never to turn things around. It's a 7k gold advantage. And now Pudding Head. Pudding could be in trouble. HC could be in trouble. There's a little bit of a fight coming in. HC. There's the wall vacuum from Rest. The EMP's in top of that as well. The Chaos Meteor's going to fly down, but all of YSM going to back away very smartly. Talek could be caught out. So could Pudding Head. Pudding's running for his life. Talek also trying to run. Could Tonas go down? No, Tonas going to pop a carapace. He's staying alive. Can hit Cold Snap going off. Talek's in a little bit of trouble. Four star from Meagles. He's going to take out. Lethal will finish off Catholic with a soul assumption, though. And this is where the rest are now on the attack. They do still have a clip up. There's no Moonlight Shadow. Batrider. Hey has his combo up. Hart now out under the Viper now. He's got 2.8k health. He's got the corrosive skin as well. He's going to be very hard to kill. 
HTE hanging in that Roshan pit. He wants to get a quick pick off. And there's the TMP Tornado. Piranha gonna lose most of her mana. She's just gonna run away. Invoker will go back to full mana though because of that AMP mana drain. Whew. And here Batrider's gonna fly. There he is, HTE. No, he gets full, he gets back, he's back, he's trying to force, so he's going to take a cold snap now as well. HCA will go down outside the base, he's going to have to buy back though. Windwalk, going to take the Viper Strike, the Tornado's going to fly. The Soul Assumption will miss, Putting Head gets hit by a Deafening Blast, Putting Head's going to go down to that Viper though. Now the doing a lot of damage, Putting Head will buy back, that melee rack's in danger now. But Windwalk and Royancy trying to hold that line, Visage's Familiars are going to go yeah, down. That's a lot of gold going in favour of Brown. Marana took all that gold. She's got four and a half K gold up for herself now. This could be a very good defense. YSM not giving up once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is a best of three. YSM took game one quite, quite strongly, and the loser of this team will be going, will be eliminated from the tournament. So the winner does still have a chance to win those prizes, uh, sponsored by. TT Esports by Thermal Take. Head over to their website www.tt Esports to check out their gear. Also check their Facebook page. And there's a Tornado EMP once again from Miggles. The EMP will not find anybody. The Tornado did hit just pointing head though. A long flame break is going to come out and Batrider is going to get a little bit of a slow from that because of that corrosive skin. Moonlight Shadow once again from Roidzy. Trying to defend this this Rax. That melee Rax down to a thousand health. It, it'll get dropped pretty quickly. And this this next team fight is probably going to decide the game, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's already in an aggressive position. Uh, sorry, if if YSM lose the team fight, it will probably be GG, but if Rest lose it, I think YSM are going to be able to go on and towards and, and take a Rax, or at least the Rashan. Rashan is up at the moment, and there's a... There's a stun under Tondas. Roidzy and Tondas both stunned. And there's the Tornado. The Tornado will find Talik, and it's going to soar straight into base Metallic, and they're not going to be able to engage on that just yet. HTE still hanging back, and... I Rana knows he's there. Oh, the Familiar's going to spot out HTE. He's going to have to get back now. He's got the Firefly. He's going to be able to go back. He's going to force stuff himself up the cliff. Ton is going to blink after him, but not going to be able to find anybody just yet. But Pipe, Twig did pop the Pipe there in anticipation of a team fight. The Flame Break will go down. Pop a little bit of that, but that Pipe's going to run out any moment now. Oh, Crystal Nova. Both teams being so careful. Windwalk getting completely locked down by those Familiar's. And Chaos Media will find out onto Roidzy. Roidzy probably going to go down, taking massive damage. Gonna say a lot of the Eclipse from Windwall comes out, the vacuum wall is down. Talek does go down to Tondas though. Luna is gonna take out that Nyx Assassin as well though. Evil Twig is gonna be flashed and he's gonna take a little bit of damage now though. Marana did go down, Royalty is down. HC is trying to stay alive, he's taking a lot of damage though. The melee racks did fall anyway, and that's what Rest wanted, they really needed that. But all of Rest is still alive at the moment, and kills it. Gonna be able to regen all of his health in any second now, courtesy of that heart. And that melee racks will go down. Dyer's middle barracks has been destroyed. HTE, Tornado look pick off. He's going to take a Viper Strike and a Gold Snap. But HTE is still trying to run away. And that oh, he's going to dodge the Sun Strike. Top tower is and being he should be fine. The Tornado's just going to skim him, but he's not going to be touched by it. Oh, close game. It's 45 minutes in, and the first Rax has just fallen. It's been a great game so far from both teams. Um, I actually have a look at the kills and deaths. I'm going to bring that up for a little bit. We can see most of the kills for rest are on the Viper, which is exactly what they want. Massage picking up a lot of kills with that Soul Assumption as well. Whereas you can see the majority of the kills on YSM's side are on that Luna. She's been doing most of the damage uh, for her team. What are the Jeep? Well, Network is the most important thing at the moment. We can see what's Viper picked up now. So. Viper. He's still got 3.2k gold. Is Luna gone? Any extra items? She's got a butterfly at the moment. There's a giant frog which I'm just kind of cute. But Windwalk and Talek, they want to get this. And HC is going to find a Firefly, a, a lasso onto Miggles. Stun will miss. Miggles is going to have to use himself. He's going to need his team to come now. But here's the Moonlight Shadow. The MP is getting dropped there. Here comes the Blinks though. Windwalk, there's a big vacuum in there as well. Darkseid going to drop the wall right on top of them now. Lethal, going to take a lot of damage. The Chaos Media is just going to soar straight through. Windwalk will go down now. Two down so far. They did manage to take out the Visage though, but it's not really worth it for Crystal Maiden and the Luna. And now Rest going to be able to capitalize on that fight and take out that Roshan. You can see once again, HDE, he's got the Blink Dagger up. He wants to go into that fight. Sunstrike's going to roar. Not going to find anybody. Familiar's on to HTE now. He's not going to be able to blink. He's going to force stuff away. He still wants to get that blink up though. They're using that courier just for scouting at the moment. And focus near Lincolns. And they're going to try and find Batrider. Where did... No, he went down to Visage. So 
three heroes down at the moment. Luna should have buyback. Where's my buyback? There we go. Luna, 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 Luna. So we've got buyback on Luna. There it is. There's the buyback. There's no buyback on the Bat Rider or the Crystal Maiden. No, both of them bought back in the previous instance. And Miggles going to pop his Yules, and he did pop his Lincolns as well. That's down for 10 seconds. Lincolns. He's also got the Gargadins up. There's the EMP. Windwalk going to get his mana drain just a little bit. Long range tornado going to fly as well. Here comes Billy. He's going to drop the Ice Wall down onto Windwalk. Cold snaps out as well. Windwalk going to have to pop that BKB. Eclipse is going to fly. It's hitting creeps and kills it at the same time. That corrosive skin just slowing down all of Windwalk's attacks, and Windwalk will go down now. Roidzy also down, and there's the GG call. Unfortunately, Rest. Uh, sorry, unfortunately, Marana and Luna both down, and they really need to stay alive for that. And this will be game two going for Team Rest at the moment. This is a best of three, so we're back in about 10 minutes' time with one more game. Once again, this has been Shats bringing you the Dota 2 action. More Tides Rats Season 3, Heather Dustin, Southern Cross, Dota. Check out the forums. Also, head to www.ttesports.com. Check out our major sponsors of the tournament's gear. Uh, as I said, this is a best of three. We'll be going back to game three in about.